Welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. I'm your host, Pat Flynn, and we are joined once again by legendary strength coach, according to Men's Health Magazine and many others, Dan John. We're going to talk about how many kettlebells do you actually need in your life? Stay tuned for that great answer. But Dan, first, how are you? How has your training been this week? Good morning. Uh, what are you drinking? Well, uh- yeah, I uh, t- I'm, today I'm drinking black coffee. Uh, I was in Orlando this weekend doing a perform better. Cool. Uh, got to see a few people. Uh, not well attended. Uh, not well attended. Um, but uh, it was good to see Chris. And uh, boy, you know, I do. I I have concerns about workshops and these kinds of things. Uh, you know, I'm hosting one in my backyard uh, in July and. Uh, I don't know how many signups we've had, but it's probably like one or two. It's, it's just, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that used to be, you know, a 15 to 20 thing, you know. Uh, yeah, boy, I haven't, well, I personally haven't been to a workshop in, in a while. Yeah, well, in, fact, in fact, Dan, I remember, it might have been almost a decade ago, but remember when I came with you to perform better in Chicago? How, that was a long time ago. Boy, um, and it was well attended back then. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, clearly it's the COVID, you know, the COVID thing really was a, but also too, uh, you know, we are in a different time and I think you have to, uh, uh, there's a new phrase called meta modernism. Uh, and, uh, I think, I think the fitness industry goes through, it's always the same. The the fitness industry is always going to be basically, there's going to be, it's going to be overrun by hucksters always. And that's just, uh, and and dental listeners don't take, I'm not, I'm not being, "Ah, you kids in your marijuana. (laughs) But that is, it is you kids in your marijuana. (laughs) Uh, It it is interesting. Uh, I remember the great article Michael Coughlin wrote about the value of snake oil, because I guess snake, uh, the, the, if you squeeze snakes out, I guess they're actually, that oil is actually quite good for you, but, the snake oil, the one pill, the here's the vitamin pack. Yeah. Uh, Same thing, different lipstick, anything. right? Mm-hmm. It, that's oh, because people always want instant fixes. You can go back to the, and I have I have a number of older books. Uh, the nice thing about it's funny the the books from 1915 that I have uh, on uh, a weight loss for women are actually really good. They're very mm. sound, extremely sound. I, I I would recommend the 1915 15. A uh, hundred and eight year ago books before I would uh, and tell some something sooner. So hey, perennial wisdom is perennial. And I just think uh, so. Those of us who and, and I don't want, I'm not better than anybody else, but those of us who stick to the foundations, the basics. Everyone kind of just does this with their hand, you know. This oh yeah, you're right. I I know, I know. I should go for a walk. I know vegetables are right, but I watched this. You know, I was in my hotel room and there's this workout. And I'm like, oh god, the Liver King. By the way, how's our friend the Liver King doing these days? I haven't I haven't kept. You up know, with I have not. Uh, I the, the thing for the Liver King is that once once that thing came out, well, I made out. a I made a prediction. I want to know if it's falsified because I was predicting that overall that controversy would be bad for him in the long term. But I haven't kept up. Has he gotten oh, more I, popular? I, I, have have people sort of abandoned? The audience will have to let me know whether my prediction is or not. I, yeah. Here's what I think happened. I think most people want uh, it, what it did is it stopped people from sending me stuff. And and thank you for that. <laughs> uh, funny, I'll get this. Have you heard about this? And I'll get this text. It's like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I don't. He says, I'll, he's I'll, all, he says he's all natural, Dan. Is he all? Is well, he? A, yeah. It's all natural. Anyways, um, talk about basics. We're gonna do. We're gonna get back to basics today, as always. It's it's good, and we appreciate you, gentle listeners. I know a lot of what we discuss is not the new sexy ad belt that will electrocute your body fat off, but we're trying to give you what we know actually works and does the job. And we repeat ourselves because what tends to work now is what will probably work ten years from now is what worked a hundred years ago, and so on and so forth. So the question, a question I get, it's a fair question. I'm sure you get it too a lot, Dan. Is how many kettlebells? How many kettlebells do I actually need? Do, uh-huh. I need? do I need one? Do I need two? Do I need singles? Do I need doubles? Do I need a, a whole spread? So I yeah. wanted to just present this question to you, Dan, and see how you currently like to answer it. Obviously, it's a sort of it depends question, but maybe we can give some yes. helpful 
guidelines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I have a little. For, I mean, I have some ideas. Really, if all you had was one kettlebell and you took it seriously, you'd be just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a male, the twenty-four, the twenty-eight, uh, the twenty, uh, female, the twelve, the sixteen, the ten. Okay, there you go. There, there are your options. But very rarely anymore. Uh, in fact, I've noticed this online is that the kettlebell has been turning more into the barbell now. Uh, the way some people are doing their training, uh, they're moving away from the, the key to the, the key. when I first learned the kettlebell, one of the things we were trying to do is, for example, even though I'm only pressing 24 kilos, what I was trying to do is grab the ground with my feet, squeeze my quads, you know, tighten my butt, you know, do the whole thing and practice the tension and even turn turn a 24 into a heavy weight mm-hmm. and find that groove, pull it down, be very mindful. And then in the ballistic work, uh, you know, you want like in the swing, I always tell people it's more like a kettle drum, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. You hit it on both sides. Even with the snatch, you hit it on both sides. That's, that's, just, a, that's a good visual. I like that a lot. The kettle drum. Yeah, there's your single kettlebell uh the go back, you know, pull out uh, the rite of passage, you know, you're going to do, you know, ladders of clean and press, and then you're going to do, you're going to roll the dice and however, how, whatever the number is, is how many minutes of swings or snatches you're going to do that day. And, you know, three days a week, you do that. And the other four days a week, you, you do your mobility and you look better, feel better. You're smarter. Uh, dogs, Dogs come up to like be you. by you. Mm-hmm. Children want to be in your presence, and movies are made about you. Yeah. If you're gonna, so for the bulk of your, your listeners, I, I honestly, and here's my general advice now: men get a twenty, women get a ten. Yeah, yeah that's that's, my- that, that's great. That's right where I'm at. I just find even myself having been playing with kettlebells for a very long time now, not quite as long as you, Dan, but a long time. Boy, that 20 kilogram is just, is such a sweet little, it's just a sweet little thing, right? It can check so many boxes. I find myself just constantly sort of gravitating around that, that 20 kilogram. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. If, and uh, I would suggest uh, always go for that first bell, the 20 or the 10. Let's just say that. And let's make that our today's law folks. I can, it can change uh, by the time I get out of this chair. Men 20, women 10 done. Mm -hmm. So from there. And then, I oddly, I started to add a lighter bell. Uh, so for if you're, if you're a male, twenty, and then get the sixteen, so that you can do uh, those high rep snatches. You can do more. You know, a, a, you know, if you got to do more reps, doing reps in the Turkish getup uh, when you're first starting with a twenty, I would say would would be you know challenging. But with this, it's weird. Only that four kilo difference uh, is it's a enough. difference, right? Mm-hmm. So for women, uh, generally, uh, I'm well. Uh, oddly, the ten is just about perfect for most women for everything. But mm-hmm. and then after that, you double your first set of belts. So you get the first bell, you get a lighter one, you double up. So three bells for uh, a twenty, a twenty, and a sixteen. Yeah, great. From there, it just becomes how much pocket you're going to use. Um, this is not an exaggeration. I have 35 kettlebells in my home now. Mm-hmm. Um, after the pandemic, a lot of people discovered that they had these door stops that they bought on the first day they had never used. So I got a lot of those. <laughs> um, I had a friend donate a bunch of a bunch of very very good kettlebells with like the 18s and the four. So I have a full set of 14s and 18s, you know, yeah, uh, just given to me. Now, the problem is, folks, general listener, I don't, <laughs> the 48 kilo, it, it became exactly, uh, that's the one I got for, uh, so th- I think I've told you the story about this place that's close to me that I've gotten double 36s one time. Um, and I believe it cost me $62. It was some, it was, Double 36s for six. Yeah, right. Pretty good. Dollars. That's a pretty good deal, gentle listeners. Yeah. So they didn't know what they were. Another time, they had two twin 24s, and the prices were different on them. And so the manager gave me the lower price, and I think I paid, again, 50 bucks. So there's this place that people go to, and that's where I've gotten my 48-kilo bell from, my 36s. 
a whole bunch of those weird weights. I have four 20 kilo weights, you know, uh, yeah. 20 kilo, which is great. I have what, what I would call overkill. And, and I'm trying to make a point here because I have so many kettlebells. I don't, I don't think I train as hard or as well as I should. Yes. Not as efficiently. Right. And look, I've had that issue too for, you know, I have been, I've been blessed with an abundance of kettlebells in my life. You know, I've always had way, way, way more kettlebells than I've ever needed at all the places I've been in Pennsylvania now in Wisconsin. Uh, so I, you know, you kind of have to force a bit of minimalism on yourself at times. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I and I, for for whatever reason, I've never just been in the position where it's like I only have three kettlebells. I always have a million kettlebells. It's just never it's just never been an issue. But you, but what you're talking about is useful. Yeah, yeah you, go ahead, Dan. Dragon, yeah, you had a ton of them, right? Oh, Dragon Gym was just wall to wall, just kettlebells, kettlebells, kettlebells. But even here, you know, I have my own very huge collection. But like everybody's got them now these days. Like we go to the Y, and they've got tons of kettlebells there. You know, it's it's yeah. just not. So not short supply at home, not short supply at the at the gym, uh, but there's something to be said. We've, this is a theme that's come up before. Dan is, um, mm -hmm. you know, deprivation builds capacity, or restriction builds ingenuity and creativity. However you want to, you know, phrase it, I think it's true that um, if the, if you don't have the sort of um, if the the restraints aren't naturally imposed on you or inevitably imposed, it's it's useful to kind of artificially impose yeah. those restraints on yourself from time to time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, on my Vermont trip last year, that two months I was gone, uh, I had a 20 kilo bell. So guess what I did? Uh, I came up with a lot of training programs for 20 kilo bells. Right. You start getting more creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did. I uh, So on a road trip, this is a great workout. I think I've told you my perfect workout. It's three sets of eight uh, alternating the uh, half kneeling press. So mm -hmm. half kneeling press eight other side eight uh if there's no place to hang i do the child's pose but, but if there's a place to hang i hang mm -hmm. then i do the a uh, hard gloop loop hip thrust uh, clam shell thing i do the Perfect. goblet squat in the overhead squat stick drill suitcase carry thank you very much very perfect it's the that's the workout that i came up with too because it's it takes care and by the way it also undoes undoes the damage of uh eight hours in the car every day <laughs> it's a lot of damage too believe me yeah so uh, yeah I, uh, so with one kettlebell a glute loop and a pvc pipe or a broomstick you know i can train very well yeah you know the, the other thing i want to talk about with the how many kettlebells you need comes of course down to general goal settings uh and expectation management right so um yeah if you want to be a professional bodybuilder with kettlebells, I think that's a mistake, but you're probably going to need a lot more kettlebells than just somebody who wants to be in general good shape with you. Like if you just want to be a good generalist, right? You, you want to be kind of like the fittest dad in the neighborhood, but you're not going and taking gold medals at the Olympics, right? The 20 and 16 is probably all you need, right? Uh, that's probably all you need. Uh, but if you want to be some like, you know, high performer, then yeah, we're probably gonna need a lot more kettlebells, but we should also have a conversation of whether you should just be restricting yourself to kettlebells at this point. So Dan, maybe we should talk about that a little well, bit. Well, let me just add this. Someone wrote on my podcast, uh, the, the comment section, which, you know, I, I tell you, people can say horrible things, but uh, this Nasty. person said, Nasty. everybody knows you can't build strength with kettlebells. And I thought to myself, everybody do we not even this. teach physics anymore? Now I get it. I, I get it. I, I have an opportunity with guys like Dan Clether all the time. Uh, uh, I got, I, I mean, I've got, I mean, Steve Magnus. I mean, I've got the, I can pick up my phone and talk to some of the smartest people in the world. Uh, I great, you know, I, I do podcasts. So, you know, Dan Clether, biomech guy, uh, you know, it's, did we suddenly get rid of Isaac Newton's laws? Because, uh, you don't want to use kettlebells. Listen, folks, building strength is a matter of either increasing load or increasing reps with the load. But the best way to do it is increase reps and load, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How how can people say, I get it. You're just trying to be a dick. 
and you win. Sorry, gentle listener. You win. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to one up me online. Okay. And I, and I get it. But I would, as I've said many times, do yourself a favor if you're going to make a comment like that. Remind yourself. <laughs> Delete your account. Yeah. The 8 billion people on the planet Earth who thought you were an idiot now have proof. That now, there, now there could be no more doubt, right? Yeah, yes. no more doubt. Uh, you know, and I get it. I mean, I, I'm a, a sort of a kind of a public figure, and it's it's your job to knock me down a notch, and I understand it, but not by going something that stupid. Mm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. straight with rocks, yes, with sand. Oh, yes, with your own body weight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Here's an interesting thing: add one grain of sand every day mm. to a sand bag. Oh, oh, oh! This is a Cohen. I love that. Uh, you know that. Oh, that would be yeah. That. Yeah. That, what a, that I mean, day. I mean, we've we've talked about this a million times, and it's it's a comment so low brow, it's hardly worth dignifying with further comment. But yes, it's obviously stupid. You can build strength with anything so long as you're working against progressive resistance right this is just a basic principle it doesn't matter um if i just don't understand why people don't go for the easy win the easy win is just to say hey maybe the kettlebells aren't the best tool for getting strong at this lift and then nobody's going to disagree with you but at least you've said something that isn't completely stupid right um right. so yeah. like you know maybe it's maybe it's my increasing age i'm still relatively young but i'm totally cool i see tater here saying fittest dad in the hood equals alphabet like to me, that's totally cool these days, man. Like I don't, I don't have many fitness inspirations of, of really much above wanting to just stay in very good, general, healthy, non-injured shape, be a good role model for my kids, and be able to just perform the tasks that life gives me, and and look good too. You know, want to look good. I don't have the aspirations to go compete in any sort of figure or power. I never have actually. I've just, I've never had that. So for me, and I think this is where I can relate to a lot of the audience, like being the fittest dad in the neighborhood, man, that's that's cool. And for that, uh, kettlebells are more than sufficient to do the job. And not just kettlebells, but like two or three kettlebells, really, with walking and heavy hands and sprinting up the hill and not eating like a complete child, right? Yeah. Uh, but for you, Dan, who's doing, you know, you're still in the competitive scene. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not just doing the kettlebell stuff, right? You know, it, like an easy win. For a comment to say, hey, Dan, you know, maybe kettlebells aren't the best tool for being super strong at Olympic lifting, to which Dan would say, well, of course not, right? <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, and the the day I, okay, so Saturday I lift an Olympic lifting meet, Monday I crawl into the gym, I'm sore, and I, you know, Mike Brown has me, you know, drags out that 20 kilo, 24 kilo bell. I do half kneeling presses. I I, yeah, it, when I Olympic lift, I warm up with the kettlebell, uh, broomstick, uh, combination. Um, it, you can say, well, that's, I don't see the, uh, you know, I want to talk about something real quick here. Uh, just real fast. I call it snapshots of intensity, but I think it's a mistake and I think it's really hurting now. It's, it's, uh, it goes back to this, the, 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 the influencer who, who's, who I know when she told me. That for every shot she posts, she takes about 500 shots. That's right. Mm -hmm. And for every workout you see online, folks, just remember this. That's a six-second, 10-second snapshot of 52 weeks a year, decades. So when you do the math, so when, I, when someone will say, well, that's not what the Chinese Olympic lifting team is doing. One of my first responses is, unless you spent eight or nine years with the Chinese Olympic lifting team, you can say, I haven't seen the Chinese Olympic lifting team doing that. Uh, but you see it all the time. You'll see a video come online of a, of a shot putter doing something. And all of a sudden this, the, the high school coach will run out and get his high school shot putters doing this thing. But it's one 30 second clip of an elite athletes thing they did. So, the person, you know, either or, or, uh, or you know, nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. depending on what, they're only taking 30 seconds out of a long career. And, and I think what happens because of that, and, and I hope you take this to heart, listeners, gentle listeners, because 
you 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 get thrown off. Um, uh, by by these tiny little moments, and you think those are the uh, looking at Arnold train in Pumping Iron. He's training for Mister Olympia in those. Actually, he's not. He's dinking around the whole time. You'll notice in the movie he doesn't really train train very often. Um, uh, so you, you you're missing those days where he did five sets of twelve in the press, five sets of twelve in the bench, five yeah. sets of twelve in the squat, deadlifts, pull ups, sit ups. You. you curls you're missing those workouts where you would look at could you imagine filming five sets of 12 in the curl and making it exciting <laughs> yeah so yeah the question is was 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 arnold like i don't know if about, enough about arnold there's a lot of good stuff here i want to jam on all of it was he like van halen because van halen was infamous for just throwing out a bunch of red herrings of telling people what he did that wasn't actually what he did because he didn't want people on his trail he didn't want people figuring out what he actually did. Was was Arnold like that? Uh, just kind of messed around and just sent people yeah. off on you. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the whole snapshot in yeah. the book, mm -hmm. in the book, it might be in the movie, but in the book for sure, Arnold tells us body this Australian uh, Austrian kid that in America now, when you do this pose, you make a lower scream and then you make a big scream when you do the this one. So he gets like as best as I can remember. I, I haven't seen the movie. I, I've seen the movie when it came out on the big screen, and I think I've seen it one other time. It might have even been at Discus Camp, oddly, and because I, I really liked the film from what I remember, I liked it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the snapshots of intensity, this is this is the general issue that we've discussed a couple of times, but I think it's worth another moment or two of discussion. And then we'll turn to Q and a gentle sure. listeners. Um, and this is something that I've really tried to think about myself and everything I do. Everything I do online is the, it's such an overused word uh, of authenticity. Now the problem is when people talk about being authentic online, they tend to be the most inauthentic people that you've ever, <laughs> ever encountered. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's always using the word authentic authenticity in their social media marketing, it's almost guaranteed um, that that is their, you know, one pick out of 500, right. Of how authentic it is, right. With all the artificial lighting and stuff like that. But this is what I love, Dan. This is what I love about music and live performance. And this is what I think you love about going on the platform. We had a gig this weekend and I was just thinking before I get on stage is like, I get one take, that's it. I get one take, either I'm going to beef it. These songs aren't easy. I don't get to do 500 takes, right? I like I'm, I'm out here. I get to do what I can do one time and I either do it or I don't right or I do somewhere in between and it's eh, okay right and there's something about that that is totally lost on this generation largely kids. right where it's a total there's kids in their marijuana Dan you know where they just they don't learn this skill of how to just perform at all right in a real way now there's something, there is, I guess, a sort of skill about doing 500 takes of something, whether it's different angles of lighting or a 10 second guitar lick or a certain lift where you get so obsessive about refining. I guess there's a skill in that, but it's not, it's not real. That's not, that's not really what you got, right? What you got is what you got when the drummer starts and you got that one take. That's what you got as far as I'm, as far as I'm yeah. concerned, right? And that's, but that there's also a loss of connection, right? Because you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in that one out of 500 takes of the 22nd thing you did on Instagram. I want to see you on stage performing on the platform on stage. And I want to see the imperfections like that to me, that's interesting, right? That's, that's what it is to be a human. Like, this is why I'm not interested in some AI robot just playing music on stage because it's going to be perfect, but humans aren't perfect and that's okay. Right. It's those imperfections. It's the struggle, Right. That's what makes stuff. That's what makes performance as interesting, whether that's athletic. It's it's the it's the realization that this person could and probably will fail <laughs> at some point. That that is the energy and the life of it. Right. And you just you lose that in the social. Like that's something that's being lost. I don't know exactly the point I'm trying to hit, but it's something in this neighborhood. Maybe you can get after it, Dan. I'll throw it to you. Well, mm -hmm. You know, I. Uh... <laughs> So that was the, the thing with uh, when Frank Sinatra was in charge of those movies. Uh, they still hold up. I mean, if, if you've ever seen like Ocean's Eleven, 
I like the original and Robin and the Seven Hoods is that almost every one of those films, every scene is one take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he hated having to do things twice. Uh, His, uh, I can't remember which album it is, but it's a 1960s album. It's a, it's an important one. It might be, it's not a man alone. That's the one that's hitting my head, but the, the album lasts 45 minutes. Recording time was 47. I mean, they just, Okay, three, two, one, go. And and I'm not, and of course, Michael Jackson famously took him six weeks to make one song. 45, 47 minutes to make an album versus six weeks to do a song. And again, I get it. It's a different world, you know, apples and oranges or whatever cliche you want. I I think you're right about this. There, There's a certain elegance of being on a high wire act. Uh, it, yeah. I, I, I like I, I like your point here. It's okay to make errors. Um, I, I know some of the online people do this. This this is my goof reel, but you can even say in the goof reels that they're, they're still, you know, they still have the makeup on. They still look really good. And the mistakes, like, the goof reel scripted, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got. I wish I could find it. I don't. I don't. I, I, they did forty seven takes of the goof reel, right? I mean, this is the internet. Somewhere days. I've got a video of me. Uh, getting my wrist broken. I'm, um, um, I mean, that to me would be a great, you know, a great goof reel. Uh, it would be, you know, one for the ages. Uh, I don't know, showing a bunch of people missing caber tosses would be pretty fascinating. Because, uh, you know, we only po- I, I'll never post me not turning the 12. Every time I post anything of me in Highland Games or track and field, it's always a very good performance. I don't ever post the fouls or the you know, the crappy throws, you know? Right, right. In other words, I'm just the biggest hypocrite uh, as everybody else. But Look, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Like you want to post the highlights as well. Um, there's no doubt about that. You want to, sh- you want to show the, the good stuff, but there's, there is something unhelpful. Um, you know, I was, I'll, one more, one more point and then we go to, go to Q and a, you know, um, I was watching an interview with a with a guitarist uh, that I admire very much, and uh, it was a cool interview because he was just kind of jamming around with the with the guy, and it was not edited. It wasn't five hundred takes, and it was imperfect. And it was like, here's a guy that, like, on the record, sounds absolutely spotless, brilliant. Like, how can a human do that? And then you just kind of hear him, just you know, I guess all natural. And it's like, okay, he's still amazing, but he's not perfect right and that, that's actually inspiring it's actually inspiring like it's to like it can be depressing for people uh and it is depressing because people will look switch from music to fitness scene they'll look at people on instagram and they'll be like these people are perfect i can never be like that right but the truth is they're not right the truth is that's one f- photo from the 500 they took where 499 did not look perfect right, right. and they and look you do something 500 times it's not like you got better like you probably just got lucky. Right? You probably just got, you hit the right note on accident that one time. Yeah. You didn't really own it, right? The, the lighting, just things just lined up. You just kind of got lucky, right? Um, it, all right? I'm done my rant on that, Dan. No, I, uh, you want, yeah. well, honestly, uh, I had a conversation a long time ago. John Powell, the discus thrower, once claimed he was the inspiration for the Fox TV show Cops. Because just before the 76 Olympics, they did a ride around with him when he was a San Jose policeman. And, uh, and in fact, I wish I could get the video. It's got David Rieger training. It's got John Powell training. So it's a great little TV show. I'm sure it, may, it must be available. It's 2023. And then, of course, Fox started when they had the writer's strike. They came up with cops. And then after that, reality TV showed up. And today, Reality TV show at the end, look at the credits, folks. There are writers for reality TV shows. And sometimes I like it. Uh, there are there are a few of them that are, I, I, I won't, I think actually there's quite, uh, there's some value to them. But we're in a world of scripted reality shows where everybody has makeup on while they go through their daily lives. You know, uh, and I, and I and I think, I, I guess I, I guess I guess I'm glad I didn't grow up with this, 
I feel for my daughter's generation because they have to raise kids through through this where every take has to be perfect every you have to have your makeup on and that's folks just ain't the way it is you know I don't this will shock some of our general uh, uh, listeners I don't have makeup on during our podcast. Mm, mm-hmm. Wait, yeah, so, yeah. You didn't put your didn't put your face on today, Dan? No, actually, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, uh, skin cancer doctor this last week, and he gave me some nice little burns, but uh, I'm I'm recovering. All right, good. Glad to hear it. Let's take some questions now. So, what? thank you for entertaining our little rant there, uh, gentle listeners. But you know, sometimes we just got to release the pressure from our spleens, right, Dan? All right, here we go. Steven says, "Good morning, gentlemen. I have a collection of kettlebells. I'm quite proud of. Fourteen in total. Eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two. Every once in a while, I think about adding an eighty and an eighty-eight. At what point should I do so? Thoughts, Dan? Well, I'm going to give you the most honest answer I can. Don't." Don't do it. You, for the amount of money you spend, uh, is Stephen right? Uh, the amount of money you spend, Stephen, on them, and how much you'll use them, it, it, it is really hard to justify. I'm just telling you that straight from the heart. Uh, mm-hmm. If you decide that you really want to go, you know, go down that road of of pressing the which one are you looking at here? The the forty kilo bell, the eighty eight, the bulldog. Yeah, I mean that would be. Uh, I have those double 36s. I mean, we use them for farmer walks, and that's about it. The 48 suitcase carries, that's about it. I used to, you know, I used to play around with them and show off, but, you know, I just, yeah. Uh, that, and, and, and please, Pat, take an opposite. No, I'm, I'm actually totally with you. You know, I'll use those heavier bells for walks and stuff when I'm at the gym, but at home, I do not have those bells because they're just not, they haven't been worth it. Uh, to have so uh, I agree with you Dan I think it's it's, the juice is probably not worth that you're gonna pay a lot for those bells yeah I don't know is it someone one time told me that you know you can get like two or three bells for the price of some of those heavier bells I can't I I don't the last thing I do is look at kettlebells and to buy I they they miraculously reproduce in my gym they do Mm -hmm. Uh, um but that that is my honest take on that okay now part two to answer your question um when you can when you find yourself mastering that 32 in certain exercises i would say um first off make sure you can standing press it with both hands i would love it if you could do a half kneeling press with it with both hands so you've really you know you've really pushed yourself to the to the edge with that belt then I would move up. Um, if with the ballistic work like swings, if you find the 32 is uh, too easy, I can almost challenge, I challenge you that you're tech, you're not doing it right. But uh, have you tried like have you tried the doubles, the uneven uh, two? And so I've got a 16 in this hand, a 32 in this hand, doing double kettlebell swings. Uh, make sure you make sure you've challenged yourself and you found yourself wanting. Uh, I got the, uh, my first kettlebell and I still have it. It's my favorite still is the 28, the original dragon door ones we've talked about before that were just so good. Um, after that, I picked up the whole classic family of six back in the day. You would, the classic six, they would send you a four, a four, which is a doorstop there. I've never, uh, no, I've used it with throwers for throwing drills. The four, the eight, 12, 16, 24, 32. That's what I went to next. Of those, probably two or three of those, we never use them. Um, and then once I went heavier because of this place, uh, I got those double 36s and I got that 48. But again, we I probably used the eight as, as much as I used the... The 48 there you go mm-hmm. so it's just but master the lifts and then go from there okay groovy hey, anthony Blink hold on blink owl is back i haven't seen him uh him her whatever I wish you guys would use your names i i i get it you want to be anonymous because whatever but it, uh, you know i mean names are, like, names and faces are so nice yeah, i was it performed better and someone came up and introduced themselves and they gave their their youtube handle i'm like i i got no idea well we talk all the time 
I, I'm talking to a, someone who is, you know, big guns, 97. I don't know what you, know, you guys like, all have such pretty faces. I know it. So pretty we'd faces, like, we would like to see them. Yeah. All right, Anthony says, uh, I've seen someone from the Mark Wildman's fan base 3D print one pound pieces for the adjustable competition kettlebell so they can micro load every move. So that's a comment, obviously. But Dan, I don't know, man. I've never just, been interested I, in micro loading kettlebells. Maybe you take the opposite position on that. I, I just, mm -hmm. I hate them. I, yeah. I, I don't, um, I don't like. I don't like micro loading and I never have. I didn't like it the first time I ever did. Now we had a guy named Randy Taylor at the Pacific Barbell Club. I did like he had, he had this little red uh, it was from his business and it was just a little red like uh refrigerator magnet. And so and, and if say like your best snatch is 185 pounds and you're working up, you know, you're doing it in a workout, he would put that on there and say, "Don't now this is a new PR." And we always enjoyed the joke and you make the lift or whatever. Okay. But it was funny because, you know, that's micro I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I know a lot of people have great beliefs in it. Uh, I've got the hard gainer magazines and, and they love micro I I've never seen a real value to it. I still. I talk about an easy strength when I was coaching at Utah state and all I had was 45 pound plates and 25 pound plates and that was it yeah and it taught me i think it made me a better strength coach because you know if i'm working with a freshman and they're learning how to snatch and by the way the, you know freshman throwers you know they snatch over 200 pounds within days so it's it's a different world well this relates to one of the other questions oh, you might well, as well tie it in yeah sparrowhawk says can you talk about the benefits of having smaller jumps and weights versus larger jumps and how that would change your program design so dan just why don't you just continue on that line of thought the, the nice thing about the large unwieldy jumps the ones that make you a little bit scared is that to get there you have to take a little bit more time so if if your gym has uh let's say the heaviest kettlebell you have is, is a 20 and the next one is a 40 well, with the 40, you're going to probably do deadlifts with it. You're going to probably do goblet squats with it, single side squats with it. You'll probably do that kind of weird two-hand clean that we, we teach in the certs, which I don't understand why it's in there because it doesn't really fit. Uh, you'll probably do maybe some uh, suitcase carries with it. You'll do some single side rack carries. Maybe you'll take both hands and put it overhead and slowly bring it down. In that in that time you're working with that 40k bell that you can't really press you can't do a turkish get up with you can do a deadlift you can do a squat with you can do a few of the things i just said um i think it's training it's training you up to the bell and it's and it's it's a challenge because when you take both hands and drive it overhead and, and do a waiter walk with it you know it's 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 not just a nervous system but it's a nervous system carrying something <laughs> walking so I, I i like big i like big jumps and i hear it too okay uh little jumps i also i mean obviously i'm a i'm a student of strength and conditioning i believe in progressive resistance exercise but sometimes i do this in the kettlebell world i like big jumps in the bodybuilding world i think uh, hypertrophy stuff, general, uh, 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 a peaking program, little jumps. Um, so uh, Olympic lifting, appropriate jumps. I, I think it, we got to make sure the tool of load increases and decreases is fitting the overall goal of what you want. Good, good. DJ says, good morning, Pat and Dan. Dan, I did not catch... What it is that you do on the road when you don't have a bar for hanging? Could you explain it again, please? Yeah, it's called the child's pose. Uh, basically, you uh, you get on your knees on the ground. Um, get on your knees on the ground. You take your hands and you put them on the ground and you slide them forward. Uh, uh, you, what you try to do is have both palms on the ground, your forehead on the ground, and ideally your, let's see, your your butt would be on your knees so remember so it's a you know here here is you kneeling it's it's kneeling it, it, just look up yeah you'll find a google image in yeah. two seconds right 
it's yeah. an exercise that's hard to mess up <laughs> right it's, yeah, it's really yeah. hard to mess up yeah. yeah yeah that stuff uh i'm I, as i know you are dan big fan of tim anderson's original <laughs> strength the rocking the the crawling the rolling try to do a bit of that you know every single morning great great stuff to do even between sets as well mm -hmm. Just, absolutely boy the mobility matters it really really does okay yeah. let's see here um Anthony says the first Doctor Who episodes were all one take relating to our previous rant. I've never watched Doctor Who. I know a lot of people talk about it and, and like it, but I've never seen it. Is this, a, is this one of those shows you're into, Dan? Uh, I, it, it, I just missed it. Uh, Doctor Who came to America's when I was uh, so, yeah, I was, I was, when it first showed up in the United States to watch on PBS, I I was I was a young school teacher. I was coaching full time. Went to the Middle East, I, I, so I, I missed it. I was you know I was twenty three, four, five, and uh, I was not watching PBS. I, when you first teach uh, and coach, you, you watching you're you're so, anything that's fashionable from say seventy six to 2023 i missed yeah i mean i, I, miss, I miss stuff that's fashionable now yeah, i know almost nothing yeah. about the current but shows I, I, kids in the I marijuana did go to where they filmed the doctor who series it's in um uh, oh heck uh come on help me out folks uh <laughs> the capital of wales right is it cardiff was it was it filmed in cardiff I, I, well, this, I one's, saw, this one's being punted to you, audience, because yeah, I, I, I saw a whole bunch of uh, the scenes and stuff like that on it. They, they set up this nice little mm -hmm. uh, walking tour, and I, I kind of enjoyed it. Honestly, I had no idea what they were talking about, but I, I, I've heard nothing but good about it. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, time for a little band promotion. DJ says, Pat, keep us posted regarding your gig as an opening act for winger does your band have a facebook page or some other social media yes well thank you very much we are it's the county fair you can find it here if you just i think it's ringer winger and skid row everybody's favorite 80s yeah. glam bands we're playing before them uh last weekend we played at a harley event so if you're in wisconsin you know harley is sort of a big thing out here and harley does a lot of shows and benefit uh, rides and stuff like that so we're kind of looped into that we're also doing harley's 120th this year you can find us uh, on facebook four on the floor but you have to search for the milwaukee because there's a couple other posers out there if i'm right, right yeah oh, hey man hey poser so if you're in the area you want to come check us out uh rock and roll all right now we're to blink out good old mr blinky Mr. Al, how do I increase my tolerance for high intensity training so I don't get cold and flu symptoms after my workout, Dan? Well, Mr. Al, I need more information. How old are you? Uh, I have made this discovery that high intensity works basically for motivated people up to age 35. And then it is like high intensity training, the the the, the tough circuits, the you know you know, the burpees followed by the Olympic snatch, followed by the kettlebell swing, followed by, you know, dancing with sharks. Okay. Uh, high intensity works until it doesn't in that. The hard thing, of course, is that the fitness industry is dominated by people who are 18 to 34. And uh, so they push that high intensity button all the time, which has value, but it has to be dosed very correctly past uh, 35. So, Mr. Al, post your age for me, and we can continue the conversation. And where are you from, Blinky? Blinky Blink. All right, let's see here. Take a few more questions. It's IL says, guys, in a press-pull squat program for strength and hypertrophy, does the heavy kettlebell clean, would that count as a pull, or should I stick with rows and deadlifts and keep, keep the cleans to, to the ballistic training? Actually, this is good. This is a question that came up on my podcast just yesterday, uh, Pat. Um, I consider the clean a pull in the pull family, and I always will. I do uh, as well. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because of that, um, when I was doing all these serious, you know, when I was, you know, Dick, Dick Notmeyer never had us do any pull-ups because if you're Olympic lifts, uh, male 46. Yeah. So, okay. So, oh, sorry. Uh, he, blink is falling up. So, um, I, I do 
And and here's the interesting thing. I mean, if you look at uh, you know, if you look at uh, the tradition, uh, Ted Williams's book, Miles Callum, you know, people always did rows, but back when I was young, when people rode, it was extremely strict. But I can't tell you, um, people really took their time. Pretending I'm hinged over. Mm -hmm. First off, they hinged, and then it was very strict. Vince Garanda recommended a two second hold here and then you'd release it and it was really a slow strict exercise mm. and i just don't see that anymore it's become more of a, a jumping clean um yeah so blink you're 46 that's part of the issue i just you might be uh um i mean the research the research for people over 35 is that you probably want to start thinking more and more about that zone two. That's that new phrase. Everyone's using zone two. Basically it's the Maffy tone numbers. Uh, it's where you go for a walk or any kind of cardiovascular thing where you can still talk. You use the talk test and then uh, probably just traditional, traditional sets and reps, uh, full body workouts and going for a walk. Uh, if you decide you want to do all this other stuff, just just know that you're paying a price for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dose dose poison, right? Just you got to turn those th adjust those dials uh, appropriately. So yeah, and you know, not, I, I sometimes find older people are like, you know, the workout that shall not be named multiple times a week, and they feel like they got hit by a bus, and it's kind of obvious why that's the case, right? It's like okay, you can do some high intensity stuff, but like even even for me, Dan, still relatively young. Uh, still have most of my vital essence, right? Uh, the like really high intensity, like metcon -y stuff, not that often and not that long when I do it, you yeah. know, not that often. And it doesn't have to be, that's the thing. Like you don't have to do an hour of metabolic conditioning five days a week. And you probably shouldn't, you probably should, you know, one to two days a week, 15 to 20 minutes in conjunction with some good quality strength training and, and walking is, is going to really kind of be a sweet spot for, for most people. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Of course I come from a track and field background. Um, but uh, I, I like what you said, you know, if you had, if you circled one day a week and you kept that one day a week circled, and that is going to be your high intensity day, the one you really go for it. And maybe you sprinkle in one more, like at the end of a workout, a finisher, that's probably the best for me. It's like what I do with loaded carries. One day a week, you should do a ton of loaded carries, but then you sprinkle in a little bit in every workout. You know, uh, every workout has a tiny bit of, I don't know, waiter walk, suitcase, you know, but it's, 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 it's the dosing after. And, and here's the other thing. And I'm, I gotta be, I'm not so sure that people up to 35, can actually do it too. Uh, if if your whole social life is the gym and you go to the gym five to seven days a week, because that's where the people who are now your friends. Uh, I have a buddy who's going through some struggles because his wife has basically cut cult-like with an exercise program. And uh, all of her friends now only do that. Her actual friends are, the my real friends do this workout with me. And my, it's my workout. And I've seen this happen before. And I got to tell you, this, uh, uh, this train, this train ride never ends well, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm just an old curmudgeon. <laughs> but handsome, Dan. <laughs> yes. All right, let's take one or two more and then we'll hear what's happening, what's new and happening on Dan John's turf. All right. I chef says, I, I just started, um, Two, three, five, ten with double press and front squat yesterday. I'm going to try it three days a week for four weeks, three rounds, four rounds, and five rounds. So this is sounds like a follow up from one of our recent conversations. Yeah. Dan, any uh, any feedback on this? Yeah, uh, that day you do the five rounds of both of those. Uh, uh, so yow, wow. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, maybe you have to shrink that down to once every two weeks, or once every three weeks, or even if you have to do the so. The hundred reps of both, even if you did it once every four weeks, once you finish it, so don't throw it out. If you say, I'll never do that again, just, you know, just, you could probably do two, three, two, three, two, three, five, two, three, two, three, two, three, five, or something like that. Uh, just be, you, you're just going to notice that that volume is going to make 
uh, um, it'll be weird to see what your hunger is like after. Uh, <laughs> one thing I've noticed here is that I get hungriest after our tonic workouts. My hunger is highest after my mobility and flexibility. After a workout like that, I guarantee I would not want to eat, which is, an, so I am more of a opposites. Um, flexibility makes me starve and uh, hot, hot, hard training uh, stops me, stops my hunger. Yeah. Blink L says, thanks a lot, gentlemen. I tend to forget my H2 often. <laughs> LOL. Well, the lols. Well, don't forget it. You know, uh, when I was 47, I was trying to be the oldest person ever to qualify for the Olympic trials. And, uh, you know, I, I look at my training then and I was doing easy strength. I was doing tons of loaded carries and I was throwing and I, and I kind of would like to sit down with little Danny at the time and say, but you've got to stop going to Olympic lifting meets and Highland games. Yeah, you're, you're trying, you're, you're trying a little bit, you know, I was, I was certainly chasing too many rabbits. And yeah. so, so if you're doing easy strength loaded carries and throwing the discus at 47, you're, you're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah great. Okay. Before we uh, turn to announcements, Dan, I want to just briefly recap what was said about how many kettlebells do you actually need? So let me see if I can summarize and you can fill the details. <sighs> Our, our hard rule, unbreakable, law of the land, is minimum men 20 kilogram, women 10 kilogram. Done. There's no arguing with it. There's no questioning it. The authority has spoken. All right? Then, 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 if you feel like you need a little bit more or want a little more versatility, which everyone's into, get one kettlebell size lighter, which would be yeah. 16 for the men, 8 for the women. Now, then step up. Oh, sorry, I already messed up. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. If you want to do something like drop to the 14. Now that there's so many more sizes, can you see how much more confusing it is? Back when we just had six or yeah. three, it was so much easier. This, this is why we just need the authority, right? Yeah. Just, no, it's just this. That's it. Right. No questioning. Okay. We'll do that. You'll, you'll be blocked. You'll be banned. You'll be humiliated. Yes. All right. Banned. Banned. Done. banned. All right. Then, if you want to go a little bit further, uh, you double your first kettlebell. So double up on the 20s. For the men, double the tens for the women. And the truth is, for most people who want to be generalist, fittest dad or mom in the neighborhood, that's going to do it. Just get a good you're program done. after that. And you're done. You're set for life. So Do like I'm, Mr. Impossible with his two, three, five, ten with that double 20s. Oh, smoking. Smoking. <laughs> Front squats? Oh, God. As a spicy eat your meatball. Fiber. Eat your fiber. Take your metal meatball. <laughs> spicy meatball. So I love that. I love that. Dan, I love that approach. You can start with one bell. It's kind of like, okay, here's your floor. And then here's, you know, maybe it's not an absolute ceiling, uh, but that's going to really carry you a very long way with an intelligent program. And of course, there's no short number of ideas on this podcast and Dan John University and Strong Line. Lots of resources for you guys. Speaking of, Dan, give us some updates. Uh, anything new on the book or writing front or anything yeah, else you want to announce? Yeah. Last yesterday i there's a there's an amusement park here called lagoon and every year i get my i buy my grandchildren seasons passes and oh so you give them the season pass oh you spoil them <laughs> well it's just I mean, it's what it's grandparents do it's what, yeah and uh <clears throat> went up there and i was sitting there at the lagoon the pool and uh i was you know because i'm i just i just gotten back from orlando I've been sick. For, I've been sick for a few days, and it's just strange. It's just like my stomach is just like low. And yesterday was like the first day I kind of felt myself. Um, I leave for England on Friday for a couple of weeks, so I, I was sitting there thinking about. I've been reading uh, Peter Atia's new book, uh, Outlive, uh, folks. Uh, there's some stuff in it. I so you know I've got Sinclair's book. I've got all these. I got. All these long, I got lifespan by Sinclair. I've got you know uh, longevity diet by uh, 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 Walter Longo. I've got all these books. I've got all these. It's longevity is the new exercising. I've got all the books. Yeah. And I was thinking, it still comes down. I'm not saying it's horseradish, but it still comes down to. He talks about sleep. You know, this is how important sleep is. Blah, blah, blah. It's, and it's all the five or six basics we talk about every week here. 
one thing I do like about is the last chapter where he opens up about his emotional issues. And I thought that was really quite good. Uh, he's he's one of those guys who wears that little glucose monitor co sure. constant glucose. And he says things like, you know, you don't get a rise in your glucose when you eat broccoli and spinach. And I'm like, thank you. I didn't need to buy a book to know that, you know, eating the more processed foods are the higher your glucose spikes. I mean, I don't want, I hate to say this nicely, but that's what we're told in Strength and Health magazine in 1964. Um, <clears throat> so. So I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, I kind of have a vision of what I want to write next. I think I know, I have that little thing at the end of every, uh, you know, I put in all my emails. It's my, how I summarize fitness in 50 words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I just might expand on that. Maybe. Oh, that'd be cool. That's a, that'd be a great hook. That'd be very cool. Well, we're going to encourage that, Dan, and keep bugging you about it every week until, as we did with the other, with the other books. So. Very good. Well, uh, awesome episode. Dan, thank you, as always, for bringing your wisdom and, here. Yeah, next Tuesday, we'll just have to work it out as best I can. Okay? Yeah, Dan's traveling. We'll, we'll work it out. If there's a little adjustment, just be patient with us, gentle listeners, as you right. always are. If you like what we're doing, a few things you can do to help. Subscribe, ring the bell, give us your thoughts and comments afterwards. It pleases Al Gore's rhythm. Uh, he did invent the internet, from what I'm told, so got to keep him happy. Not and what he said. <laughs> and uh, give us some stars. Five is what is preferred, of course. Uh, and go support Dan John and his work and his podcast and his books as well. Ta fare thee well. Goodbye.